it been good so far? Yeah. I've been running around trying to get things checked out. In fact, I'm glad that the screens just popped up. I was going, oh no, here they go, because they were blank for just a moment. But now I get to wear a different hat, and that is to, to hopefully share something with you about stress. Anybody here ever been stressed out? Now I can tell you, I'll be honest with you, this is the health and healing crusade, and the last number of days have been quite stressful, I must confess. Because we come into an empty building and we have to turn it into this, right? Get all the technical things going. In fact, we're having some problems with our live stream, so if you can hear me out there, I apologize. And hello, sweetheart, I love you. But stress, my friends, is actually a lot worse than you think. And that's the, the title of this message, because stress is something that can impact every single area of our lives and our bodies and our spiritual natures. So stress is something that's really huge. In fact, stress can kill you. There's really no more blunt way to put it other than stress can kill you. And stress symptoms can be affecting your health, even though you may not be realizing it. You might think that illness is to blame for that nagging headache or for your frequent insomnia, your decreased productivity at work. But stress could actually be the culprit, maybe not a disease. According to Mayo Clinic research, stress can affect your body. Stress can affect your thoughts. It can affect your feelings. And stress can affect your behavior. So quite literally, this is us. When you look at these four, this comprises what I would call a living soul. And stress can impact us on a, a level that most people don't understand. And being able to recognize the symptoms of common stress and acute stress and prolonged chronic stress can give you a jump on managing them. Now, tomorrow we'll talk more about the solution and how to manage your stress. Today, we're just going to go over the bad news and it might stress you out. <laughs> stress left unchecked can contribute to many health problems such as high blood pressure, heart disease, obesity, diabetes, cancer, and much more. So we're going to look at some symptoms. In fact, I only listed about 52 of them. That's all, just 52, because I wanted to make sure that you were stressed out. No, I don't want to do that. But the point is, I want to educate you on the myriad of stressors that you could have in your life. So let's go over, over the 50 most common signs and symptoms of stress. Frequent headaches, jaw clenching or pain. Has anybody ever experienced that? I, I have headaches quite often, but mine is because of a, a spinal problem I have. But I have almost never have a, a headache-free day. What's interesting when you're stressed out, though, is that there's these fight or flight chemicals that actually kick in, like adrenaline or epinephrine and cortisol, and these can, can cause what's called vasoconstriction, or they can cause vascular changes, which can leave you with a tension, headache, or migraine. Even while you're in stress, or even during the letdown process. So, you know, what happens is something stresses you out, all these hormones are released, all of a sudden, like right now, I'm, I'm, I'm publicly presenting one of the number one stressors known to man. The good news is it doesn't stress me out anymore. God's really helped me with that, praise the Lord. But the reality is all of these chemical changes start to take place when there's that stressor in our life, including the stress period and even after that, what we call the letdown. Stress can make your muscles tense, uh, which can aggravate the migraine or the headache even worse. And beyond treating the headache itself, we focus on headache-proofing our home, and we'll get into that a little bit tomorrow. That can include our diet, and it should, our lifestyle as well. What's interesting, though, is that researchers once blamed tension headaches on tight muscles in the face and neck. Have, you've all heard that, right? Oh, I've got a headache. Oh, I'm, just, I'm really under stress. I've got a lot of tension, and I do. I carry a lot right here and right here in my low back. But the reality is, what research has shown now is that stress-induced fluctuations in neurotransmitters like serotonin and endorphins 
also activate pain pathways in the brain leading to headaches. So it's not necessarily right here that's giving you that, that headache. Now, there are tension headaches, but friends, there are brain headaches now. They finally figured out, they said, wait a minute, these different neurotransmitters like serotonin and, and endorphins are actually being lit up and being, well, they're hormones and secreted to try to get some communication going. The problem is it causes, it messes with the pain receptors in the brain and before you know it, you have a brain headache. I never knew that before. Frequent headaches, jaw clenching or pain. Gritting or grinding teeth. Stuttering or stammering. Maybe that's because you have stress in your life or you're just trying to speak real quick to cover your information. Tremors, trembling of your lip and of your hands. There's also a neck ache we talked about, back pain, muscle spasms. In fact, stress can set off an acute attack of back pain as well as contribute to ongoing chronic pain. So if you already have back problems, the moment you become stressed or have a stressor come into your life and you respond with stress, you can actually aggravate your back muscles. I have back problems. I've had them since I was run over at 12 years old. And the reality is whenever I come under stress and I, learn, I haven't learned how to manage it, which we'll talk about tomorrow, then all of a sudden my back starts to go. I can even go into spasm and wind up in bed for several days. So stress is a serious thing. And this is because of that fight or flight response which involves tensing your muscles to spring into action. One recent study in Europe found that people who are prone to anxiety and negative thinking, anybody here prone to anxiety and negative thinking, don't raise your hands, but some of you probably are. You're kind of programmed that way. Well, guess what? God can deprogram us. Amen. But if you're prone to uh, anxiety and negative thoughts, you are more likely to develop back pain, while in a U.S. study, they tied anger and mental distress to ongoing back pain. So literally, they're finding, of course, we understand this, we are intricately linked, body, mind, and spirit, right? And so when one is suffering, it all suffers. We're a living organism. Lightheadedness, faintness, dizziness, ringing or buzzing or popping sounds in the ear, frequent blushing or sweating, cold or sweaty hands. Some of you are going, I have all of these. <laughs> cold or sweaty hands or feet. Dry mouth. Now, what's interesting is when I speak, one of my stress symptoms is I get the driest mouth ever. I mean, eventually, I think one of these days, I'm going to go, <gasps> and my lungs are going to come out as powder. But that's one of my stress uh, symptoms that I have when I speak. Uh, Problem swallowing, frequent colds, infections, uh, uh, herpes sores. People exposed to common viruses are less likely to fight off the germs successfully if they have ongoing psychological stress in their life. Your immune function decreases dramatically when you're under psychological, emotional stressors in your life and you're experiencing stress. So, so much so that you become more susceptible to even the common cold. Researchers believe that stressed people's immune systems and their immune cells may be less sensitive to a hormone that turns off inflammation. So people that are suffering with inflammation type problems, when you're stressed out, they say, they're saying something's wrong to where the switch doesn't turn off and the cells become actually inflamed themselves. How about rashes, itching, or hives, or goosebumps? In fact, most acne sufferers already suspect that this is true. When they are stressed, you get zits. Did you know that? You get pimples when you're stressed if you're prone to acne. And what's interesting is research suggests that students with acne will actually have more outbreaks when they're under stress like finals week. And then they want to go off, oh, we're done with finals, and their face is loaded, right? They're like, oh, no, I'm not pretty anymore. But see... Stress impacts every system in our bodies. It's amazing. Thirteen, unexplained or frequent allergy attacks. My mother has that. She's like, I don't know what's going on. Heartburn, heartburn, stomach pain and nausea. In fact, heartburn, 
Stomach cramping and diarrhea can all be caused by or worsened by stress. If you already have these issues and you're getting yourself in a stressful situation and not learning how to deal with the stress, you're just going to make it worse. If you're not going, you ain't going to go if you're stressed. Or if you're already going too much, you're going to go more if you're stressed. It just depends on how your body reacts. Isn't it crazy? And we're going to talk about what stress is and what you stress is and, and all of that in just a few minutes. Um, in particular, by the way, IBS or irritable bowel syndrome, which is characterized by pain and bouts of constipation and diarrhea, is thought to be fueled in part by stress. So if you have IBS and you're, st you're struggling and you're suffering, really look at your stress load. You may be able to relieve some of that symptom. Excess belching or flatulence. My wife is convinced I am very stressed out. <laughs> Constipation, diarrhea, loss of control. 17, difficulty breathing, frequent sighing. <sighs> Asthma. Have you ever done that where you just like, I, you know what's interesting? About four weeks ago, there was a lot going on in my life, and the stress was overwhelmed. I was overwhelming. I, I hadn't got a good enough sleep. I wasn't eating very well. Everything wasn't going very well, and I, I found myself just wanting to sigh. <sighs> and I kept going, why is this? And the more I studied into it, I'm like, that's a symptom of stress. I should have known better. Stress seems to exacerbate asthma in people who have the lung condition. In one study, this is crazy, children who experienced severe stress, such as the death of a loved one, had nearly a two-fold increase in the risk of an asthma attack over the following two weeks compared to those that were not under stress. So even our children, friends, they experience stress just like we do. They may deal with it in a different way. Hopefully you're helping them with their stressors in their life. If you don't know how to help them, then we're going to get you educated so you can help yourself and them, right? But little people go through stressful times. When mommy and daddy are angry, stress to the child. Mommy and daddy are fighting, stress to the child. And if there are a bunch of children here, they, they, they would say, amen. <laughs> Sudden attacks or life-threatening panic. I've had this only happen to me one time in my life where I felt like I, I couldn't breathe. I thought I was going down. I thought I was going to fall over and have a heart attack. It is, it's a scary thing. I've only had that one time, and it was about six years ago, and I never want to have that again. Uh, 19, chest pain, palpitations, rapid pulse. In fact, a recent study of 200,000 employees in Europe found that people who have stressful jobs and little decision-making power are 23% more likely to have the first heart attack than people who have less job-related stress. So you're a quarter, again, more, more likely to have a heart attack if you have a stressful job and you have little decision-making. <clears throat> That's why we want to delegate, let people have some decisions to make. Diminished sexual desire or performance. Ex uh, excess anxiety, worry, guilt, and nervousness. Increased anger, frustration, and hostility. Brain imaging research shows that major stresses can reduce the amount of tissue in the regions of the brain that regulate emotions and self-control. And we're going to get into this. We're going to look at the brain toward the end of this presentation a lot. What they're finding is that certain parts of the brain, anybody ever heard of the, the, the uh, frontal lobes or the prefrontal cortex? If you've seen my music seminar, you know I talk a lot about the prefrontal cortex. Specifically, when under stress, it impacts the prefrontal cortex. It's very interesting. <clears throat> 24, depression, frequent or wild mood swings. What's wrong with this guy? He's happy, he's down, he's depressed, he's happy, he's <laughs> all over the place. It could be stress. And this, it's manifesting itself this way. The anger, the rage, whatever it may be. So we got to dial back a little bit and say, what's going on in my life that's causing me perhaps stress? And understand, these symptoms could be symptoms of other things going on in someone's life as well. It could actually be a disease process. And you should go to your doctor and, and talk to them about, uh, about these or go to your favorite healer. Increased or decreased appetite or cravings. 
Studies have linked cortisol. You, have you heard of cortisol? Cortisol, it has its functions, but friends, if you are chronically stressed and have stressors in your life, cortisol can be very dangerous. It's a hormone released during times of stress, and it leads to cravings for sugar and fat. So now, on top of being stressed out, you're like, I want fat, I want sugar. You want your feel-good type of foods is what we call them. Why? Because those kinds of foods release other chemicals in our brain that make us feel better, the feel-good hormones, right? So it becomes this terrible cycle, a cycle of stress. Get stressed out, go eat that, eat that, that fatty food, that Snickers bar, whatever it may be, eat that thing. Before you know it, you feel kind of guilty about eating that thing, kind of makes you a little bit depressed, and then you're stressed. Before you know it, you go back to that thing and you go, meh, 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 and you're like this little guy on a hamster wheel and you never get off. And friends, you know what the definition of insanity is, right? It's doing the same thing over and over and over again, expecting what? A different result. So if you're stressed out in your life, if your health is not where you, you want it to be, if your relationship is strained and stressed, then let's get on God's plan. Let's learn how to impact those stressors in our lives and not react to them like a non-converted person. And God can do something with our lives. It's true. Because stress, by the way, impacts our character, and we're going to get into that in a moment. Studies have linked, like I said, the, um, the hormone cortisol, which gives us cravings for uh, sugar and fat. Scientists believe the hormone, listen to this, cortisol, binds to the receptors in the brain that control food intake. So all of a sudden, you're stressed, cortisol binds to that, to that receptor, and you don't know when to stop. It, and then it just compounds the problem, right? And if you already have a high body mass index, you're even more susceptible. Insomnia, nightmares, disturbing dreams. Did you know that stress did all of this? And we're halfway through our list. Stress can cause what's called hyperarousal. And I don't mean sexually, but mentally, even emotionally. A biological state in which people just don't feel sleepy. Anybody relate to that one? Man, there are times when my brain's going, and it's like, I got to go to sleep, and I can't fall asleep. The stress is causing this hyper mental and emotional arousal. While we have these major stressors and stressful events in our lives, and many times those pass, stress over a long period of time, releasing these these hormones and these chemicals, which is a natural reaction, it can start to cause some serious problems like insomnia. You know, that's not just periodically not being able to sleep. That's like, I can't sleep. And then you start going a little nuts. Oops, wrong. Uh, let's see. Difficulty concentrating, racing thoughts, trouble learning, new information, forgetfulness, disorganization, confusion. We all just went, yep, that's us. In fact, too much, too much of that stress hormone cortisol again can interfere with the brain's ability to form new memories. Very, memory storage and formation is quite complex. But what happens when you have this, these hormones spilling into your bloodstream and into your brain, before you know it, you have you have memories not being formed, and you can literally go learn something, walk away, come back to it, and go, i got to start all over. I don't even know. And when you're under stress, your brain cannot and will not form those new memories properly. During acute stress, the hormone also interferes with neurotransmitters, the chemical that uh, brain cells use to communicate with one another. We don't want to mess with the neurotransmitters, my friends. This is the chemical that's used for our brain to talk to other parts of the brain and from cell to cell. We're going to get into that in just a moment as well. Difficulty making decisions. Increased or decreased appetite. Oh, what happened? I just, I went all the way back somehow. But we're not going to let us stress us out. Just... Take a deep breath, and we just keep going. It's all right. All right. Feeling overwhelmed. Nope, I'm feeling chill. I'm feeling reserved and surrendered to God. Frequent crying spells or suicidal thoughts. 
feeling of loneliness or worthlessness, little interest in appearance or punctuality, nervous habits, fidgeting or foot tapping. I don't know what it is, but it runs in my family. And when we're sitting there at a table, our legs just going like this. I mean, it's just all of us males. I don't know what it is. So pray for us. Nervous uh, habits, like I said, increased frustration, irritability, and edginess. Now, what's interesting is some people say, oh, I'm just tired. Well, guess what? You're just tired? That can add to how you cannot properly handle stress, okay? And then all of a sudden you're irritable, you're irrational sometimes, and you're edgy. What's going on? Stress. How come when we go on vacation, of course, leading up to it's kind of stressful sometimes, right? Isn't that funny? I, we're going on vacation whether you like it or not. You know, wow, it's going to be great. How many times has it been stressed like that? You know what I'm saying? We got to hit the airplane or we're going to go, we got to get the best campsite, whatever it may be. The reason is we're under stress just because of that event, frankly. Until you get there. And when you're there, are you immediately stress free? No. I, a friend of mine did a beautiful gift for me many years ago. He took me to Barbados and my family as a gift to my, my family and as just like, we love your ministry, we, want, we see that you're busy, we want to take you to Barbados. Day seven, we were there for 10 days. Day seven, we were walking, I was in my flip-flops. We're just walking along the little town there, looking around, the girls were just looking at some of the shops and the boys were walking in. And, and I turned to my friend Kevin and, and tears welled up in my eyes. And I said, I'm relaxed. He said, welcome to your vacation, brother. Seven days to unwind. I had to unwind like a broken spring. And I'm in God's work. Oh, God's work's not, not, not stressful at all. You just pray and present all day long. You've never been in ministry then. 38. Increased number of minor accidents. Um, obsessive or compulsive behavior, reduced work efficiency and productivity, lies or excuses to cover up poor work, rapid or mumbled speech, excessive uh, defensiveness or suspiciousness, problems in communicating and sharing, social withdrawal and isolation, constant tiredness, fatigue, weakness, frequent use of over-the-counter drugs, weight gain or loss without diet changes, and we have a couple left. Increased smoking, alcohol, drug abuse, excessive gambling, impulse buying, seizures, and even stroke. So friends, we're talking about serious symptoms and side effects just because of stress. Oh, I'm just stressed out. No, next time you catch yourself saying that, saying, I'm stressed out, I really need to deal with this. Because we've got to learn to let it go, and there, there are founded ways to let it go and tomorrow we're going to go through a lot of those today is the bad news tomorrow's the good news okay so i know most of you are a little more stressed out than when you came in here after we went through that list of 52 things I'm, and i didn't mean to to raise your cortisol and do all that i'm sorry but the reality is you were stressed out when you walked in anyway i've been looking at you oh i don't want to sit there no. okay <laughs> Why? Because this is how we go with our days. We're just wound up like tops. And God the whole time is going, I'm right here. I have the answers. I'm right here. Come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden, and I will stress you out more. But that's how you think it was written. Oh, he says, come unto me. My yoke is what? So heavy you couldn't bear it. But that seems like that's what we believe. And friends, this is only a partial list. So tomorrow at 2.30, we're going to go over coping with stress more than just deep breathing. The World Health Organization said that stress is the health epidemic of the 21st century. It, it's, it's at these crazy levels like never before. Well, we have these computers and devices, and they're supposed to make life better and easier and more efficient. No, it just means we try to cram 10 times as much into our lives. And we sit there watching these devices or doing whatever, and, and we're nodding. Our body's saying, go to sleep. You're stressed out. You're like, oh, just a couple more minutes. <laughs> oh, I missed that. Back it up. I'm watching this or I'm doing... 
Your body's saying, go to sleep, but I don't want to miss out on anything. No, we need to miss out on some stuff, friends, because we're too stressed out. Amen? Amen. American Psychological Association, they did uh, several different studies back in 2014. And here's the top causes of stress in the United States. Job pressure, coworker tension, bosses, work overload. Money, number two, loss of job, reduced retirement, medical expenses. Health, health crisis, terminal or chronic illness. Relationships, divorce, death of a spouse, arguments with friends, loneliness. Poor nutrition, inadequate nutrition, caffeine, processed food, refined foods. Did you know you can stress out your body and your mind and your emotions just by putting the wrong stuff in your mouth? It's amazing to me how myriad the effects are. Media overload, television, radio, internet, email, social networking, on and on and on. I know people that tend more to their little farms on their special devices than actually growing one which, by the way, would relieve stress. Oh, I got to go water my cabbage. Oh, you have a garden? No, on my phone. Whoa, you have a smart garden? What are you talking about? No, it's a game. (laughs) U.S. stress statistics. Percent of people who regularly experience physical symptoms caused by stress, 77% in the United States say, whenever I get under stress, I have physical symptoms. Cited money and work as the leading cause of their stress, 76%. So three-quarters of the United States adult population is saying that money and work is my leading cause of stress. Maybe you should, you should stop chasing the dollar, trying to not just keep up with the Jodens, but blow them away. Hello? I mean, it's not keeping up with the Joneses anymore. It's like, oh, no, 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 look at me now. What a stressful way to live. Maybe you need a new job. Maybe your job is too stressful. And it's okay to acknowledge it's too stressful. Let me find something else. Yay, you! It's okay. You don't have to be Superman or Superwoman. Those possessions are apparently already filled. But we, we, we buy all these lies. And we're living the American dream. Now, the, the American dream, quote, quote unquote, is killing us. Regularly experienced psychological symptoms caused by stress, 73%. Feel their stress has increased over the last five years, about half of the people. Feel they are living with extreme stress, about a third, well, exactly a third of United States adults. Reported lying awake at night due to stress, 48%. That right there is most people probably even in this room. And we act like everything's okay. Nope, let's just keep, fake it till you make it. No, fake it till you die. (laughs) Stress impact statistics. Stress has a negative impact on their personal and professional life. Yes, 48% of them. Stress has caused them to fight with people close to them, 54%. They have difficulty managing work and family responsibilities, about a little, almost a third. People who have cited actual physical symptoms experience the following. Fatigue, 51%. Headache, 44%. Upset stomach, 34%. Muscle tension, 30%. Change in sex drive, either up or down, um, 15%. Feeling dizzy, 13%. So you see, all these, all of us are having these different, not, maybe not all, but different ones of these for each of us because we all react differently. Irritability and anger, half of people. When you're stressed, you're not the little cherub-like person that you used to be. Am I wrong? No. When we're stressed out, so even, I, I see it. You know what? I've been to Disneyland. Anybody, anybody ever been to a theme park like that? How many stressed out parents are crushing the dreams of their little ones at Disneyland? No, we're not going to, but uh, (laughs) nobody, (laughs) because they're waiting in line, they're hot, they're irritated, they're drinking soda pop, not water, all the stuff, right? Now they're irritated, and the kids are going, I don't like Disneyland. (laughs) Why? Mommy's mean. (laughs) Feeling nervous, 45%. Lack of energy, 45%. Feeling as though you could cry, 30%. Business News Daily. They did an estimate. 
And they said, they reported that stress costs American businesses an estimated $300 billion a year. In fact, there is strong statistics that show that 9 out of 10 cases that doctors are treating people for today are stress-related. That's 90%. Okay, so... Most of us realize that we are under stress. We are on some sort of stress. But what is stress? I want to define it because it will help us tomorrow. Because tr- stress is a term that's just really thrown around. But there's several types of stress, actually. Stress, let's look at the screen here, is a state of mental or emotional strain or tension resulting from adverse or very demanding circumstances. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Here's what actually stress professionals and researchers, how they define it. A state of mental, emotional, or physical strain resulting from internal or external stressors, which leads to a condition or feeling experience when a person, listen to this, perceives that demands exceed the personal and social resources the individual is able to mobilize. So in other words, when I'm feeling stress, some stressor, which we'll look at in a second, comes into my life. I respond with stress in my mind, in my body, in my emotions because I think that the stressor is outside my capabilities of handling it. That's what that says. Do you understand what I mean? Okay. Now, what's a stressor? A stressor is the thing that stresses us out, right? It's the agent, condition, or other stimulus that causes stress to an organism, specifically things that happen that require the utilization of of resources. So, for instance, setting these things up, there were times when I had to tell people, look, you know what to do, please go take care of it. But we're looking for this. We're good. I, got, I, got a, I got the list of a thousand things to do. You have five. Go take care of your five, please. So we, that's one thing we'll look about tomorrow. Look at tomorrow. It's called delegation. Delegation helps relieve stress. This is the least stressful setup we've had in 17 years. Amen. Because, you know, I'm putting this in my head going, don't you be totally stressed out before you talk on stress. That would be kind of foolish. So there's two main types of stress. Acute, which would be sudden, like all of a sudden you're ready to fall off a cliff and, and cortisol, everything kicks in and all of a sudden, poof, and your, your muscles tense up, you grab on and you have supernatural strength. This is why a mother can lift a car off an infant. It's incredible what can happen when everything kicks in. So it's there as what we call the fight or flight response, okay? There's also chronic, which persists over a long period of time. Now, the problem with chronic stress is this can be the very deadly kind of stress. We also have what we call eustress versus distress. Eustress is what we call, a, it's like a positive term uh, uh, for positive stress. Dr. Lazarus, Professor Emeritus, He suggested there's a difference between eustress and distress. Distress is what we would call a term, it's a term for negative stress. So eustress would be positive. There's no such thing as positive stress. Actually, yeah, there is. Let's look at it. Positive stress motivates. It focuses energy, is short term, is perceived within our coping abilities, and it feels exciting. It improves performance, enhances physiology. So this is like a positive stress. Well, what's a positive stress? Let's look at them. How about receiving a promotion or raise at work? Would that be positive? Yeah, it could, it could have be very stressful, though, when he calls you in. You're thinking, oh, what's going on? And then, hey, we're giving you a promotion. Oh, and your body releases all these endorphins, and now you're like, yeah, that's positive stress. I'm good with that, right? How about marriage? How about getting married? Is that a stress? Leading up to it, it sure is. Because there's a thousand little things to do, right? How many brides have you seen that turn into bridezillas? Why? It's the stress. That's why. How about buying a home? Is that stressful? Yes, I'm I'm working on selling one. That's stressful. How about moving? But you see, the or taking a vacation, like I said, taking a vacation can be a positive personal stressor. Holiday seasons can stress people out. Retiring. And even taking educational classes, learning a new hobby. All these can actually become positive stressors. But the beautiful thing is they have a good, healthy result. And it's only temporary. So we get through it because we know what the reward's going to be, right? Junior is going to be married. And this is a great thing. 
We're going on vacation. Once we get there, we'll put our toes in the sand. It'll be worth all the stress, right? Running through an airport, which I've done many times, to no fault of my own but the airlines, when you get there and you sit in that chair and you're puffing and puffing and you're sweating and people go, had to run, huh? I'm like, yeah, I think it was like 47 miles because these airports are huge today. But by the time you get there, you're like, ah, it was worth it. It was temporary. But there is distress. Distress or negative stress has the following characteristics. Causes anxiety or concern. Can be short term or long term. Is perceived outside of our coping abilities. I don't think this is ever going to end. Feels unpleasant. Decreases performance. Can lead to mental and physical problems. What are examples of negative personal stressors? How about the death of a spouse or family member? In fact, that's the number one level stressor known to demand. Filing for divorce, that's a very close second or separation. Losing contact with loved ones, hospitalization, injury, or illness. Not just for yourself, but for a very close loved one. You can experience the same level of stress, like for instance, my wife. She's been chronically ill for eight years now. We finally, after $40,000 of testing at Mayo Clinic, we finally figured out what she has but there's no cure. So our stress didn't go down, it went up because there's no known cure. And so I experience the same amount of stress because she's, she's my wife, she's my help me, she's my better half, right? And so I experience the same level of stress as she can experience as well, even though it could be her injury. And likewise for me, if I'm having an injury, it impacts her stress level. Uh, being abused or neglected, and conflict in relationships. These are examples of personal stressors, bankruptcy, money problems. We've talked about some of these unemployment, sleep problems, legal problems, excessive job demands, and commuting and traveling schedules. So taking personal inventory of the stressors in our lives is absolutely vital. We have to not just sweep it under the rug because emotionally, physiologically, mentally, even neurologically, and in our character, spiritually, we are being impacted. It is changing us. So we're, we're, some of us are going through these stressors right now in our lives. And I really want to encourage you to get here tomorrow because I want to help you see that there are simple things and some are a little bit more intense to help you get through and deal with the stressors in your life. But we need to look a little bit deeper and we need to talk about our thoughts, feelings, and habitual behavior, how it can cause distress. Common internally caused sources of distress include, now these are the internal distressors, fears like fear of flying, heights, public speaking, chatting with strangers at a party. There are people that are absolutely stunned by the amount of stress in these given occasions. My father-in-law does not like to go to social gatherings because it causes an elevated level of stress for him. I know people who will never fly. I said, yes, you will. No, I won't. Yes, you will. No, if you're, if you're faithful, your feet are going to leave this ground. You're going to fly. And they said, well, of course, brother. I said, so when Jesus is there with you, you're going to fly? Yes. Well, he can be with you right now. Let's go. Kind of walked him into that. Repetitive thought patterns. I'll never figure this out. Why does everything go wrong for me? How come I'm always a loser? How come the, the, the universe is against me? This is a bad thought process because it incurs stress response. We have negative thoughts that change our feelings, and the feelings influence our behavior, and this is the cycle of stress. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You know how fast you can spiral out of control in your thoughts and emotions. Got to be careful. Worrying about the future events, waiting for that medical test, the results to come back, or job restructuring, unrealistic or perfectionist expectations. This is something I struggle with. I used to not let anybody do anything, and, and I couldn't delegate it because in my mind, this is bad, I thought, nobody can do it right, so I must do it. If you have that process, uh, that thought process, you are on the way to having some sort of health problems. They will start to manifest. Because you are not God, I am not God, and I don't know everything, and other people can do it, even if they do it differently, it doesn't mean it's wrong. Amen? In fact, a lot of wives are going, amen. 
you know, because if, if I do it, I'm going to do it wrong. Habitual behavior patterns that can lead to distress include overscheduling. We're going to talk about this tomorrow. If you consistently overschedule yourself, you're going to stress yourself out. <coughs> Failing to be assertive. Procrastination. Yeah, people put it off to the end, and then they complain that they don't have enough time to do it. Well, my kids do that. Well, they're not kids anymore. They're 17 and 19, and they're about like this now. I, I say to myself, I say, just because you left it to the last minute, does, that does not even give you the right to complain about it. We told you for three weeks to do this. But now it has to be done tonight. Obsessive compulsive disorder, this is another habitual behavior that can cause distress. Distress impacts our moral character, friends. Anger, that's not of God. Increased frustration, that's not of God. Irritability, overreaction to petty annoyances. Depression, frequent and or wild mood swings, escapism substance abuse, and it goes on and on and on. Now, I'm going to get quickly into the neurobiology. Frankly, I've only got about 10 minutes. I'm not even, I'm a little over halfway through my slides. Neurobiology of stress. Listen to this. The loss of the prefrontal cortex, or the PFC gray matter, with chronic stress has been seen in humans. So they're seeing there's actually a loss of the gray matter that makes you a moral person. That's what happens in the prefrontal cortex, by the way. This is your morals. This is what you believe. This is what you reject if it's against God. This is what you accept if it is of God. And they see that this part of the brain, which should be the king of the brain, to regulate the other regions of the brain, that prefrontal cortex is actually shrinking and atrophying over time under people who are under chronic stress. Chronic stress in humans also weakens the uh, prefrontal cortex, functional connectivity, and the prefrontal cortex regulates a regulation of the amygdala. Thus, sustained stress exposure leads to more persistent changes in the brain circuits, regulating behavior and emotion, maintaining the brain in a more primitive or reactive state. So here's what happens. The other parts of the brain that are more reactionary, like in the amygdala, more of a, like a fight or flight reaction, where you have emotionally charged memories as well, all of a sudden the prefrontal cortex is not functioning properly as the king and the guardian of the soul because it's all stressed out. And the other parts of the brain that should be regulated by your sense of moral worth and understanding and values is now not functioning properly. And now you're reactionary without thought. So when you get stressed, whether it's a little crying baby, eventually the little crying baby that will not stop after six hours, you're like going, just want to go like, boop, because you're not thinking anymore. Literally, that's what happens. When you see shaken baby syndrome, it's because the mother's going, you got to stop. She, Her frontal cortex, prefrontal cortex, is no longer able to function and make moral decisions anymore. This is huge. This is huge. It's not just job performance. It's my performance as a Christian, as a father, as a husband, as a friend. It impacts every single thing going on in our lives. Acute, uncontrollable stress exposure also weakens the prefrontal cortex self-control and contributes to substance abuse. With chronic stress, sorry, with chronic stress, there are additional architectural changes, I'm talking about prefrontal cortex, that further exaggerate the switch from highly evolved, this is, this is what science says, to more priv primitive brain cells. In other words, highly evolved meaning our sense of God impressing the prefrontal cortex with the still small voice. This is, by the way, where we perceive that. And we're making higher decisions. We're functioning on an executive level, in a sense, a higher level, as opposed to a more base, non-godly way, or primitive way, as they say. I've got to skip through this. Basically, what this study is showing is that there's a loss of what are called spines and dendrites. Now, these are important because this is how the brain, in one respect, connects and communicates with other parts of the brain, and brain cells communicate with one another. And here's what happens. In, in short, when you're under stress, the prefrontal cortex, what's happening over in long stress, long duration of stress, 
There's less of these spines and dendrites. They're not connecting to the rest of the brain like it's supposed to, and there's more connections to different parts of the brain like they made to the left. Do you want to become more base? You want to become more worldly, to use a term? Then continue to be stressed out. This is deeper than probably you ever thought it would be. In contrast to the prefrontal cortex, chronic stress increases dendrite growth in the amygdala. This is what we're talking about. Thus accentuating an imbalance of amygdala over prefrontal cortex function. No, 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 no. Should never be that way. Stress on your brain. The stress on the brain creates free radicals that kill brain cells. Cortisol creates a surplus of neuro, the neurotransmitter glutamate. Glutamate creates free radicals, which are unattached oxygen molecules that attach brain cells much in the same way that oxygen attacks metal and causes it to rust. Free radicals actually punch holes in the brain cell walls, causing them to rupture and die. Friends, when you're stressed out, you just released a little gang, and they're just going pop, pop, and they're popping brain cells, punching holes into them. Chronic stress makes you forgetful and emotional. Memory problems may be one of the first signs of stress, you'll notice. Studies show, well, we've got to move on. Stress indicates a vicious cycle of fear and anxiety. Stress builds up in an area of your brain called the amygdala that we talked about, and this is your brain's fear center. Stress increases the size and activity level, and the number of neural connections to this part of the brain makes you feel more fearful, and it's this vicious cycle again. We're going to move along here. Can you tell that there's a lot of things that stress does to your body, to your mind, to your emotions, and your character? Cortisol can kill, shrink, and stop generation of new neurons in the hippocampus, the part of the brain that stores memories. Hippocampus is, is critical for learning, memory, and emotional regulation, as well as shutting off the stress response after a stressful event. So then, here's the problem. We mess with the hippocampus when we're under stress, and if we do this chronically enough, the hippocampus doesn't know how to shut off, and your worries and fears just continue to escalate. escalate. Before you know it, you have a panic attack, you break down. Stress, shrink, shrink, you already read that, shrinks the prefrontal cortex. Your brain is highly sensitive to toxins of every kind. The blood-brain barrier is a group of highly specialized cells, this is very important, that acts as your brain's keeper. This semi-permeable filter protects your brain from harmful substance while uh, letting needed nutrients in. So it keeps out the bad, lets the good stuff in. That's great, right? Stress makes the blood-brain barrier more permeable. Uh-oh. In effect, making it leaky. This lets things into the brain you don't want there, such as pathogens, heavy metals, chemicals, and other toxins. Having a leaky brain barrier is associated with brain cancer, brain infections, and MS, multiple sclerosis. So now I'd like to tie this together for you for just a moment. Does stress impact your thoughts? Yes. Does stress impact your feelings? Yes. yes. Let's tie it together with an inspired statement from the spirit of prophecy. If the thoughts are wrong, the feelings will be wrong, and the thoughts and feelings combined make up the moral character. So if I'm under stress, and I'm under distress specifically, and I'm stressed out, and it's influencing my thoughts, and it's influencing my feelings, friends, according to the spirit of prophecy, it's impacting my moral character. Do you see it? So this is actually a moral thing to learn how to give it over to God, and I'm going to, tomorrow I'm going to put some, some tools in your stress relief toolbox so we can learn to develop characters like Jesus Christ. Praise God! Isn't that why we're here? And to reach out to other people and say, hey, we've got some good news for you. You don't have to stay stressed out like you are. Imagine going up to a guy going, okay, you want to have a Bible study? Let's go right now. I don't have time. <laughs> What's up? Doesn't even make sense, right? Oh, no, I want to go back. This is, this, this is unbelievable. I've got to read the rest of this. 
if the thoughts are wrong, the feelings will be wrong, and the thoughts and feelings combined make up the moral character. When you decide that as Christians, you are not required to restrain your thoughts and feelings, it doesn't matter. I, it, this is just how I am, and you've got to learn how to deal with it. No, no, no. Listen, you are brought under the influence of evil angels and invite their presence and their control. <laughs> uh, hello? Anybody home? Yeah, that's serious, isn't it? In fact, friends, let's think about it. This is why sometimes when we get so stressed out, we act like demoniacs. Why? Well, we're saying, bye-bye, Jesus. Hello, Satan. Imbue me with all of these stressed out and, and being short, and then all of a sudden something flies out of your mouth that you haven't even ever said profanity in the last 20 years. Where'd that come from? Right? Where'd it come from? Not you. Well, yes, it was you, but you're letting another spirit control you. Reading on. If you yield to your impressions and allow your thoughts to run in a channel of suspicion, doubt, and repining, you will become among the, excuse me, you will be among the most unhappy of mortals and your lives will prove a failure. I mean, this is no joke. Stress can kill you. How many times have you found yourself in a stressful situation? You felt overwhelmed. You lashed out at somebody. I know maybe nobody here, but I have. You see, there's an adversary. His name is Satan. And he wants to stress you out. He wants you so busy being under Satan's yoke. He wants you to be so busy that you just don't even have time for God. He wants to stress you out so much that you don't even resemble what a Christian like, look like and you're definitely not modeling it for your children. Because friends, listen, under stressors and distress, our reactions reveal what's really going on inside of here. And that could be a really scary thing or it could be a good thing. You'd say, wow, the stress has come. I gave it over to God and I don't become a crazy guy. The devil knows if he squeezes you just enough, gets you to the point to where you just can't do it anymore, he's going to win the battle for your soul. So let's look over a couple last things and then we, were, we will conclude. Specifically now, how key body systems react. Not just that they react, but how do they react while under distress, okay? The nervous system. When stressed, physically or psychologically, the body suddenly shifts its energy resources to fighting off the perceived threat. Sometimes it's not really a threat, but we perceive it as a threat in, no, in, in what is known as a fight or flight response. The sympathetic nervous system signals the adrenal glands to release adrenaline and cortisol. These hormones make the heart beat faster, raise blood pressure, change the digestive process, and boost glucose levels in the bloodstream. Once the crisis passes, body systems usually return to normal. So that's just the, the, that uh, neuro uh, system. How about the musculoskeletal system? Under stress, mu muscles tense up. The contraction of muscles for extended periods can trigger tension, headaches, migraines, and various uh, mu uh, musculoskeletal conditions. Three, respiratory system. Stress can make you breathe harder, cause rapid breathing, or hyperventilation, which can bring on panic attacks in some people. Cardiovascular system. Acute stress, stress that is momentary, such as being stuck in traffic. Come on, you got it! I, I'm surprised more people don't have heart attacks on the freeways. Causes an increase in heart rate, stronger contractions of the heart muscle, boom, 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 boom. blood vessels that direct blood to the large muscles and to the heart, they dilate, uh, increasing the amount of blood, dilate, uh, for the blood to be pumped into these parts of the body. Repeated episodes of acute stress can cause inflammation in the coronary arteries thought to lead to heart attack. You're irritating that lining, endocrine system, adrenal glands. When the body is stressed, the brain sends signals from the hypothalamus 
causing the adrenal cortex to produce cortisol, we've talked about this now, and the adrenal medulla to produce epinephrine, sometimes called the stress hormones. Liver, this is all part of the endocrine system. When, the cor when cortisol and epinephrine are released, the liver produces more glucose, a blood sugar that would give you energy for the flight or fight in an emergency. Do you understand? When we're coming under stress, man, our body's going, mm, 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 and, and like, it's, like, it's like a four-arm, uh, four-alarm, what am I trying to say? Four-alarm fire, that's what I'm trying to say. You see, that stressful moment just caused me to forget. No, so the point is that when we're coming under this stress, we're going into this crazy stressed out situation, our whole body is moving forward to try to get us back on track and to actually escape this, this problem. It hits our esophagus, it hits, and that can lead to um, heartburn, acid reflux, our stomach, which you can react, you have to have, have that butterfly feeling sometimes, or even nausea, pain, you may vomit through uh, if your stress is severe enough, gastrointestinal, it, it really hits your bowels, we've talked about that, and reproductive system, it can cause major problems, it can cre create absent or irregular menstrual cycles, um, you can have more painful periods, it can reduce sexual desire, stress absolutely can destroy. Chronic distress can kill, friends. It can take away your happiness, your peace of mind, your relationships, and even your walk with God. It wears you down mentally, emotionally. It saps the joy from our lives. It is no fun experiencing these distress symptoms, is it? It's, it's really dangerous. And it's no picnic for those around us as well. Right? Well, I've been married to her for this long. She's had dealt with it for this long. She can deal for it for another 30 years. Are you sure? You may be killing her. Stress is real, but distress can be dangerous. Now, we have some sheets we're going to hand out to you. Um, please, everybody take one. Just pass them down the rows, perhaps. This is what's called a life stress inventory sheet. I want you to take it. I want you to look through it, and you'll notice when you get it, on the front, it says adult life stress inventory. It explains what to do, but I'll explain it for you. On the back, it's for a non-adult. That would be someone like under 18, and they can fill out this back because young people have stress as well. So when you look at this, for instance, on the adult, death of a spouse, that's worth 100 points. Write it over here in the rightmost column. Go down, and if you have these, and you've experienced these, listen, in the last 12 months, how long? The last 12 months, you're going to fill these out. You're going to write in the number that it equates with that stressor in your life, and total it at the bottom. When you come back tomorrow, the first thing we will do is interpret the numbers for you, and you will understand where your stress level is in your life currently. I can tell you that mine was dangerous, I'll be honest. I have a lot of stress going on in my life right now. Sick wife trying to get our home that was sinking, literally our home, two-story home, sinking. Um, lots of money to get that repaired. All the contractors not showing up, trying to keep try, flying to the other part of the world to do ministry. All, you know, it, it is, it's stress. And my score was very high. I'll share what my score was tomorrow. And learning the things that I learned, it helped me to become better at dealing with it. So I'll meet you here tomorrow at 2.30, coping with stress more than just deep breathing. Amen? God bless you and have a non-stressful day.